All right, so welcome back to my part two of my review of Dominion Plunder. So we have about 40 more cards to go over for this uh, for this expansion. So let's get started because we got a lot to cover. And I will share my top 15 favorite cards from this expansion uh, for last. So let's first start with these treasure cards and then we'll get on to the actions and then we'll get on to my 15 favorite cards. Okay, so here we have Jeweled Egg, and it's, you know, going to give you treasure, it's going to give you a buy, but then when it gets trashed, you get a loot. That's pretty simple, straightforward, uh, since we, especially since we spent a lot of time talking about loot cards in the last, in the last video. Okay, so then we have Abundance. The next time you gain an action card, you get a plus buy, you get three extra treasure. Now, it is a duration card, so uh, if you don't end up buying an action the turn that you play this then if you don't end up buying an action, then on your next turn or the next time you gain an action card, you'll get a plus buy and three treasure. So it's kind of situational in that way. You could basically be buying a treasure that turn and then maybe next time you'll buy an action card and then you'll get your extra buy and three money. But if you do end up getting an action card the turn you buy this, then it's not gonna stick around because you're going to instantly get this. So, cool, cool. Uh, tools. Gain a copy of a card anyone has in play. Well, that is pretty interesting. Um, there's a lot of durations in this expansion. So, if one of them are in play, and some of these in some of these duration cards, they kind of stay in play for multiple turns. And so, that means there's a lot of potential cards you could get a copy of for sure. As long as you're playing with some durations, of course. So that's pretty cool. So I think Tools is a pretty good card. Because you could gain just about anything that's a duration almost. If they're in play. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, Crucible. Treasure card from your hand. And then plus one treasure per treasure it costs. Well, that's that's nice. Pretty straightforward. Simple. So trash in state. Get two money. Trash your gold. Get six money. Pretty simple. Uh, silver mine, gain a treasure costing less than this to your hand. Now, it's true that you could just literally just get a silver by playing this card, and you may and that may not seem like a good card. This silver mine, not, silver mine might not be a good card if the only treasure you have that costs less than silver mine is silver. But this expansion has so many treasures, and there's several several treasures in this expansion that cost four the cost two and three and so on. So it's possible you could have some good some good treasures in the game and then this silver mine will be a lot more useful if that's the case. Uh, the buried treasure. At the start of your next turn, you get plus one buy and plus three money. So this one is similar to the other one except this, this one won't give you the plus buy and three treasure the turn you play it. It'll be your next turn. But that's really fascinating about the buried treasure is when you gain it, you get to play it. So you get to utilize its effect for your next turn on the turn you... I mean, you get to utilize its effect for your next turn on the turn you purchase it. So that's really cool. That's that's a good one. Uh, pendant. You get plus one treasure per differently named treasure you have in play. So if this is the only treasure you have in play, then it's just worth one one point, right? One One treasure. But most likely, you'll have at least a copper in the beginning of the game. So it's worth two. Potentially, you'll have different treasures, though. Potentially, this could give you a lot of money because, remember, this expansion has loot. And they're all treasures. And there's other treasures. So you could easily have several different, maybe maybe five, four or five different treasures in play when you decide to play the pendant. And man, that's that's basically almost like a platinum. Potentially, a potential platinum for sure. Uh, figurine. I talked about this in the last video about uh, it letting you draw two cards during your buy phase because it's you know a treasure card, right? Um, but you may just get you may also discard an action uh, card for plus one buy and plus one money. So while it's a treasure card that actually only usually gives you uh, cards to draw, you could also discard an action card for a buy or a treasure, which is why you know I I liked having this card for that. Uh, that shy trait that really worked out because, because you know, you may not always have an action card you want to discard anyways. So, um, but maybe, but maybe what you draw is an action card if it's your, if it's your buy phase 
and then hey now you've got an extra card you can't utilize so you might as well discard it for buying a treasure so that's pretty nice regardless uh, then we have the pickaxe here it's going to give you a treasure but then you can also trash your, then you also trash a card from your hand and then if the card you trashed costs three or more you gain a loot to your hand too so hey that's cool trash a, a silver get yourself a loot i would totally do that oh definitely because the the silver is only giving you two but the loot would always give you almost except for maybe one they're all giving you three money so it's awesome it's basically trashing a silver to get a gold basically that's that's cool it's totally worth doing for sure a uh, sack of loot um it's only a treasure in a buy and it costs six but you gain a loot every time you play it so hey that's it's gonna be good on the long run for sure that's it it's definitely an easy way of getting loot and then we have Keen's Cash. You may play a treasure from your hand three times. <laughs> wow, that's a seven-costing card, too. But hey, that's that's a good one. Very good one. Especially since there's so many different treasures in this expansion. So that's going to be cool, for sure. Okay, so that's all the treasures except for the ones that might be in my top 15 favorite cards. Now, I don't have any uh, in these cards here. I don't have, any, have them in any particular order except normal actions to durations, basically. Um, and then cost level, because I haven't decided how I feel about these cards, if I like them a lot, or if I just, or if I, or if I hate them, or something like that, I don't really know, except for the 15 that I picked out that I really like. So, a lot of these are still really good, regardless, and I think they are really good, but I, I'm just not sure if they would make it to my favorite list or not. So, we talked about Fortune Hunter a little bit, as in, we used it as the trait demonstration in the last video, but what's really cool is... Um, obviously you get two money when you play it, but then you get to look at the top three cards of your deck. You may play a treasure from them and then, uh, put the rest back in any order. So maybe there's a treasure. There's most likely going to be a treasure in the three cards you draw, probably, even if it's a copper. And then basically you get to play that copper and now, Hey, it's like two and plus two plus one now. So it's basically possibly giving you three money at the least. Of course, if you're unlucky and don't draw any treasures, then well, at least you still get to rearrange the cards and put them back in any order for other other good reasons, right? But still, it's it's still potentially a good card. You could potentially draw a good treasure card, and hey, then you get to play that treasure card even though it's still your action phase. That's pretty cool. It would definitely work well with that uh, figurine card. Okay, then we have Harbor Village. After the next action you play this turn, if it gave you plus treasure, then you get plus one, then this would produce one treasure. So basically, if the next card was Fortune Hunter after I played Harbor Village, then hey, I get plus one extra treasure. So now instead of like two, I'm getting three. And I still get the card in two actions, so regardless. So hey, that's cool. But of course, that's only going to work with cards that, you know, give you that plus treasure. Still, pretty cool. A good, a good, a good, a good uh, village variant, for sure. Map Maker. Okay, well, I really like this card. I almost put it in my top 15, but um, look at the top four cards of your deck. Put two into your hand and discard the rest. So, hey, that's cool. I mean, I get to choose two to put in my hand. I like that. That's really cool. And I'm beginning to look at four of them. That's really cool. But what's really interesting is it's a reaction, too. So when any other... So when any player gains a victory card, you may play this from your hand. When any player, so if you play, I mean, if you gain a victory card, you may play this from your hand. That's interesting. Potentially, uh, if you had multiple buys, the turn you, you gain a victory card. If you have multiple buys and you get to look at four cards and some of them are treasures, treasures you could potentially get more treasure and buy something else. That's really cool. But then if your opponent does the same thing, you can do this too. So that's... That's pretty cool that you get to do that. Just watch out that if you do this on your opponent's turn and you look at four cards and put two in your, into your hand, you now have more than five cards in your hand. So if Militia comes around or another attack card that's like Militia comes around, you're going to be possibly discarding more than three cards. So just make a mental note that that could potentially happen if you decide to react to uh, with this card on your opponent's turn. Still, that's that's Map Maker. Uh, Pilgrim. Well, there's a, I think there was a card very similar to this one out there, but this one's letting you draw four cards, and then you put one onto your 
then you put a card from your hand onto your deck. So that's pretty simple. You're getting four cards, but you're technically getting three, technically, but you're getting four. So it's, you know, it's it's okay. It's good. You still get a lot of cards, so. Uh, Mining Road. Uh, plus one action, plus one buy, plus two money. Pretty simple there. But then once this turn, when you gain a treasure, you may play it. Oh, that's cool. Um, if you were to gain, oh, I don't know, figurine during the action phase, whew, man, that's awesome with this card. You could play it, potentially. Then you get to draw two cards with figurine. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, of course, you'd have to have another way of gaining that uh, figurine on the action phase. But still, that's pretty cool, for sure. Mining Road is definitely an interesting one. Uh, Wealthy Village, another village variant. One card, two actions. When you gain this, if you have at least three differently named treasures in play, you gain a loot. Well, that's cool. You probably will have three differently named treasures, but you may not always, but but potentially you will in this expansion since there's so many treasures. Potentially you will. So that's pretty cool. A nice little addition, additional benefit for getting this wealthy village for a cost of five. So it's definitely worth going for if you're... If you have at least three different lean treasures in play, it's definitely worth doing because you're getting a loot too. Uh, crew, you get three cards, and then at the start of your next turn, you put this onto your deck. So your turn, the turn you play it, you're getting three cards. Then it stays in play. Then on your next turn, the crew will go back to the top of your deck. So that's interesting. So you'll get to use it again soon. That's pretty cool. So if you have some villages around and... You could potentially just have powerful turn after powerful turn, thanks to the crew. Cool, cool. Of course, it'll be every other turn. That's that's cool. Potentially every other turn, anyway. Cool, cool. Uh, launch ship, you get two actions. Okay, well, you don't get anything but the two actions when you play this. But then at the start of your next turn, you get two cards. So that's still pretty good. I mean, yeah, you might want the two cards now, but getting two cards at the start of your next turn is not a bad deal. Still getting the two actions, so you're going to obviously want to play a card that's going to give you more cards. But hey, it's still kind of interesting. Okay, enlarge. I talked about this in the last video too. So now at the start of your next turn, you trash a card from your hand and gain one, costing up to two more than it. So it's a remodel on the turn you play it and on your next turn, basically. And remember, I got to play this one with uh, the reckless trait. So that's why I got to do it twice on the turn I played it and twice on the turn, on the next turn, which was really cool. And then I lost the card. <laughs> so that's enlarge, pretty good one. Flagship, you get two money, and then the next time you play a non-command action card, replay it. So you can play another action card, um, as long as it's not a command action card. And it gives you two money. I guess it's okay. I guess it just depends on what you're getting to play a second time. Landing party. Okay, you get two cards and you get two actions. Well, that's nice. But then the next time the first card you play on a turn is a treasure, uh, you get to put this onto your deck, deck afterwards. So the turn you play it, you can have a nice, powerful, fun turn, especially if you have other action cards and stuff like that. But on your next turn, if you play an action card before a treasure card, then this stays in play. You won't have access to it. It'll just stay in play until the first turn you have, you decide to go straight to, uh, you decide to play a treasure first. Most likely the case, you're going to have to go to your buy phase first and obviously miss, skip your action phase. But there might be ways you could play a treasure card first on during, during, during your action phase. And then that would help this get out, get this back onto, uh, onto your deck, getting to activate this again sooner. But still, it could potentially stay in play for quite some time until you decide to skip your buy phase on a normal, in a normal uh, game. Still, it's a pretty nice card, for sure. Okay, Cabin Boy. You get a card, you get an action, um, and then at the start of your next turn, you can choose one of these options. You can get two extra money for your next turn, which is still good. You could trash a card, um, Trash this, in fact, I mean, you could trash this to gain a duration. So you can hold on to the cabin boy to get two money every other turn with it, and then getting a card in action the turn you play it. Or you could just simply trash this to gain a dura duration card of your choice. If there are duration cards costing five, 
and this expansion has lots of those, this might be worth trashing so you can get a better card, a better duration card, potentially, for sure. Um, but still, you might just hold on to it because it's still a good card nonetheless. A card in action now, two money later. That's pretty cool. That's pretty good. Uh, the Secluded Shrine, you get plus one treasure, so that's okay. But then the next time you gain a treasure, trash up to two cards from your hand. So this will stay in play until you decide to gain a treasure. And when you do, you can trash up to two cards from your hand. You don't have to trash any cards because it's up to two. But you could do up to two. You could do just one or you could do zero. Still, it stays in play until you decide to buy a treasure or gain a treasure. So, which is okay because when it's an action card that's only going to give you plus one treasure anyways. So it's not like you really need it in your deck. Filling up your deck with tons of secluded shrines could be a problem. Because it, you know, it's a copper but wastes an action. So, you know, it's good to uh, not get too many of these. And then we have Taskmaster. You get an action, you get a treasure when you play it, and then if and then if you gain a card costing exactly five this turn, and at the start of your next turn, you repeat this ability. So it'll stay in play. You play it, you get the action, you get the treasure, and it stays in play. Um, unless you don't buy a card costing exactly five. If you buy a card costing six or, or less than five, then it's gone. Then it doesn't stay in play and you discard it during the cleanup phase. But if you buy a, a, a card costing exactly five the turn you play this, then it stays in play. And then at the start of your next turn, you get to repeat this ability by getting that extra action and treasure, which is kind of nice. Uh, getting two, getting to start your next turn off with two actions instead of one and a treasure could be quite handy. And if you continuously buy uh, five costing cards, you could potentially have this in play for a while. So that's pretty cool for sure. Not necessarily the best card out there, but it still kind of has its uses for sure. So that's all of the cards there, except for the ones that are in my favorite list. So we'll go from uh, least favorite to the most favorite, right? So we got 15 more cards here. So here we have Maroon. Now, with this one, you just trash a card from your hand, and then you get two cards per type it has. So if you trash like an estate, because you're just going to get two cards. Still, that's nice. Trash a copper, you're still going to get two cards. But if you trash something that has more, uh, more types, like an action and an attack, or an action and a duration, or an action duration attack. Whew. Man, tell you tell you about it. That's like six cards. If you trash an action attack duration, you could get six cards. That's powerful. Of course, even if you're just simply trashing a card that's got an action duration or something like that, or a treasure duration for that matter, whew, that's still four cards. That's awesome. Maroon is just a really good card. Plus you're potentially getting rid of something you don't want anyways, like an estate or a copper. Um, Gondola. Either now or at the start of your next turn, you get two money. Well, that's cool. You could get just get the two money now if you really need it. Or you can save it for your next turn and get two money for your next turn, which is cool. But what's really interesting is when you gain this, you may play an action card from your hand. So that's potentially, depending what action card you're going to get to play, that could potentially be quite useful to purchase. You know, when you gain this, purchase purchase this, you can play an action card from your hand. Assuming you have an action card in your hand you didn't utilize or couldn't utilize, right? So, you know, Gondola definitely has its uses. You might just simply buy it so you can play that action card that you weren't able to play. I like Gondola quite a bit. Okay, Cage. This is interesting. Set aside up to four cards from your hand face down on this card. The next time you gain a victory card, you trash this card and you put the set-aside cards into your hand at end of turn. So this is like saving some good cards for later in the game for a powerful turn, basically, when you gain a victory card. Which, if it's something like treasure cards, for instance, like maybe that's a, an, an interesting way of getting rid of a few coppers in the beginning of the game, once you start getting some silvers and stuff. You could potentially put a few, put a few coppers on this card, and um, then you have less coppers to deal with, which would be nice. And then the next time you buy a victory card, you get those four coppers back. But hey, you were able to get, get rid of them pretty fast without actually, you know, getting rid of them. And then still maybe utilize them later, potentially. That's an interesting idea I had with it. So, and it worked out 
fairly well. So, you know, that's cool. And of course, you can just simply buy an estate early and, and then, you know, get to, you know, utilize the cards you put down on the cage. Still, it's a pretty good card. That's why it's, it's a really good card. That's why it's in my top 15 favorites. Okay, then we have Frigate, an attack card. Well, you get three money when you play it, which is nice. And then until the start of your next turn, each time another player plays in an action card, they discard down to four cards in hand. Ouch! But man, is that powerful. I mean, I mean, they, they are only potentially only discarding one card. But if they play an action card that gives them a bunch of cards, well, now they're going to have to discard a bunch of cards too. So it's going to, it's going to, it's going to, basically stop them from comboing all these cards you know when a player like plays their entire deck of cards in one turn it's going to potentially stop that from happening for sure it's going to stop that nonsense from happening of course you like it when it happens to you but you don't like sitting there watching your opponents play every single card in their in their deck on one turn either so this will pre prevent that from happening because they're because then it's not like they're going to have just a ton of cards sitting in their hand waiting to be played. So uh, it's definitely, and it's every time. So each time they play an action card, they're going to have to discard down to four cards. It's not one time, it's every time, which is why I love it so much. It's such a powerful attack card. Okay, then we have Search. Uh, it gives you two money, which is okay. and then the, But then it says the next time a supply pile empties... You trash this and gain a loot. So basically, it's a one-time use, and you set it. To, you basically put it in play, and it stays in play until a supply pile empties, and then you gain a loot after it's trashed. So it's a one-time use. But what's really cool is you could potentially get a bunch of searches. You know, maybe if you're playing like a four-player game, you have three, three or four searches. Well, eventually, that's going to empty out a supply pile, probably. And then all of them get trashed and you get a bunch of loot all at once. Oh, that's a good card. A good card just to simply purchase because it's, you know, cheap. It only costs two. And it's giving you two when you play it. And it's, so that means it's not going to clog up your deck either. So, you know, that's that's pretty nice for sure. And I and I played with this and I had a lot of, a lot of fun with this card. When a supply pile finally did empty, it was really cool. and But it took a while because it was only a two-player game. But, man... I can see this being even more fun with a three or four player game for sure. Powerful card. Very good. Okay, then we have Stowaway. At the start of your next turn, you get two cards. But what I really like, it's a it's also a reaction. So when when anyone gains a duration card, you may play this from your hand. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, it's it's also thematic. How many people are gonna notice that that they have a stowaway on board, <laughs> basically, right? <laughs> they may not notice that, and so, and they so they go about their business, and the next thing, and they they know that somebody plays, you know, this, but, you know, it's it's awesome. And since there's so many durations in this expansion, that most likely, most likely, you'll be playing with two or three durations probably in each game you play when you play Plunder expansion, probably. And so, whew, man, you know. Most likely, they might gain one. So potentially, you could have this in your hand, and then that means your next turn, you get to start with two cards. If you potentially had more stowaways, you can get a whole lot of cards. That's awesome. Or you can just simply, you know, if you don't, if nobody buys a duration card, but you can still play it for your next turn and get a bunch of cards that way. So it's still a really good card for sure. Cool, cool. So the next one we have is Trickster. Well, each other player gets a minus point card. But then once this turn, when you discard a treasure from play, you may set it aside and put it into your hand at the end of turn. So <laughs> that's a pretty good card. It, since there's a lot of treasures in this expansion, especially the loot cards, I found myself uh, playing those loot cards often. The same same one over and over. Because, you know, I, I, would, I would get to play it, but then I would get to put it into my hand for, for my next hand, basically for my next turn, so I'd get to play it again, you know, that's pretty cool, I like that a lot, the Trickster, really cool card, for sure, um, so yeah, Trickster, pretty good card, pretty good attack card, okay, Quartermaster, here's a good one, and here's another good one, uh, that I really like, at the start of each of your turns, for the rest of the game, choose one, gain a card costing up to four, sending it aside on this, or put a card from this into your hand. 
So Quartermaster will stay in play for the rest of the game. You play it, it stays in play for the whole game, okay? And then at the start of each turn, you can choose to either gain a card and put it, that's that costs four or less, and put it on the Quartermaster, or you can take a card that's on the Quartermaster and put it into your hand. Oh, it's, it's man, it's, it's so awesome. Think of all the possibilities, all the times when you're like, oh, it's, it's on here. You know, sometimes I'll get a whole bunch of cards, maybe two or three, and I'll have them on the Quartermaster. So that way when a certain turn comes around and say, hey, I've got all these action cards and there's a village sitting on my Quartermaster, I've got to put that village into my hand and now, hey, I'll be able to play all my cards thanks to my Quartermaster. So yeah, it's a really good card to have around for sure. I really like this card a lot. All right, the Shaman. This one, you get a plus action and you get a treasure and you may trash a card from your hand. But what really makes this card cool is in games using this, at the start of your turn, gain a card from the trash costing up to six money. Well, on your first turn, there probably won't be any treasures in the trash on your first turn, on the first couple of turns. Potentially, probably not. There might be some if you're playing with a particular other expansion, like Nocturne or something, but most likely there won't be. But then, but then when somebody trashes a card later on, you know, let's say they they play this and they trash a uh, they trash a minus point card. Well, that's going to go into the trash, okay? Then the next player goes. Then he has to gain a card from the trash if there is one, costing up to six. So now the that next player that goes. He's getting that minus point card now because you trashed one. Now they're getting it. Of course, if if you're if you're trashing multiple cards on a turn, then you may not be getting that minus point card because you can choose between whatever's in the trash that cost up to six. So it's in your best interest to trash a bunch of different cards like estates and coppers and stuff like that. But potentially, you're going to be getting some of those cards back to your deck. So it's going to be really difficult getting rid of cards, trashing them, and getting them. It's going to be really different, difficult doing that because of this card here. So it, it's in your best interest to, to uh, you know, be careful what you trash. I mean, you know, watch out because because your opponents are now going to get something that you just trashed, pot potentially, unless there's, a, unless there's more to choose from. Still, this is a really good card, and uh, man, it's going to definitely mess up your opponents for sure. It's almost like an attack card. Getting a trash a card, that trash card is basically probably going to end up in their in their deck after the fact, unless they unless there's a bunch of tra cards in the trash, you know. So in the beginning of the game, that could happen a quite a bit. So shaman, that's a really interesting card. Definitely one of my favorites. Okay, then we have the siren. Each other player gains a minus point card. At the start of your next turn, you draw up to eight cards in hand. So you potentially drawing three cards for your next hand, assuming you don't have other cards in play that give you cards or something like that. So that's cool and that's useful. But then when you gain this, you have to trash it unless you trash an action card from your hand first. So it's almost always going to get trashed unless you trash an action card from your hand, which is why it's so cheap. But there might be some ways to mitigate that where you don't have to trash a card by simply getting it put somewhere else. And in the rope book, it even says that insignia won't cause the siren to get trashed. So it gives you some idea of what certain cards will, you know, allow you to gain it without actually losing it. But still, it's a very, very unique card, to say the least. It's definitely one of my favorites. Okay, okay then we have the first mate. Play any number of action cards with the same name from your hand. Then draw until you have six cards in hand. Man, if you've got a lot of the same action in your hand, you know, maybe multiple villages or something like that with the same name, well, then, then you get to play them after this first mate. Whew. Then you've basically lost a whole bunch of cards. You potentially could draw a bunch of cards after the fact. Oh, man, I like that a lot. First mate is definitely an interesting card. I'm going to have a lot of fun playing it again and again. Then we have Swamp Shacks. Plus two actions, then you get plus one card per three cards you have in play round down. So you, the first time you play this, you might not get any cards at all. But if you're playing with a lot of durations in this game, and that includes uh, duration treasures too. If you're playing with a lot of durations in this game, 
there's potentially going to be some durations in play when you play this card that you have in play. And then you might get to draw some cards. If, especially if you're playing with like, oh, I don't know, like certain certain durations stay in play, like the Quartermaster stays in play for the rest of the game. So if you had something like this, you know, Quartermaster here, or a bunch of Quartermasters in play, you could almost always guarantee you're going to get to at least draw one card because this also counts as three cards in play. So all you would need to have is two Quartermasters already in play. Potentially, though, you might have some other duration card or something in play before you play this. Still, it's a very interesting card. I really like Swamp Shacks a lot. You could potentially draw a lot more than one card, especially as the game draws to a close, when you have multiple dura durations in play and stuff like that. Oh, man, Swamp Shacks is awesome. Okay, then we have Rope. Okay, well, it gives you a treasure and it gives you a buy, and that's okay. I mean, that's not why I like it, though. At the start of your next turn, you get a card, and then you may trash a card from your hand. So that's really cool. You're getting an extra card, but then maybe you want to trash a card from your hand, too. So it's a really good card. I really like Rope. Plus, you're getting a treasure and a buy when you play it, because it's, it's still a treasure anyway. So that's really a really good card. Rope is definitely good to have around, for sure. Okay, Cutthroat. Each other player discards down to three cards in hand, so it's a militia variant. The next time anyone gains a treasure costing five or more, gain a loot. Okay, so you could play this potentially, and you could potentially decide to buy a treasure costing five or more. If you do, you gain the loot, and this does not stay in play. But then if it does stay in play, the next time somebody gains a treasure that costs five or more, and hey, loot costs seven, so that would count too, you would gain a loot for it. So that's cool. I like that a lot. But it'll stay in play until they decide to get a treasure. So what are your, what are your opponents going to do? Are they going to not buy treasures costing five or more, and that includes loot, to keep this in place so that way they don't have to worry about getting attacked by it? You know, some might do that, but then, <laughs> but then they'll realize that's a horrible mistake too. So no, they're not likely to do that. So most likely they'll end up buying a treasure somewhere down the road. And then this won't stay stay in play for so long. So eventually you'll get your loot. And, you know, if that means that means you might have to also potentially, you know, buy a treasure costing five if you want to get a loot sooner, of course. And, and of course, getting to play this again sooner. Still, it's a really good card. I really love the cutthroat. And then my most favorite card from this expansion is Grodo. You get an action, so you're not wasting an action playing it. But then you get to set aside four up to four cards from your hand face down on this. And at the start of your next turn, you discard them to, to draw as many. So, man, this is a good card to play in the beginning of the game when you haven't gotten rid of all your estates. It's a good card to play in the beginning of the game. But it's a really good card to play at the end of game when you have tons of provinces, potentially duchies, and potential other victory cards, potential that or other cards in general that just don't do you any good. So this is a good card to play at the beginning and at the end of game. Not so much in the middle of the game, maybe, but definitely beginning and ending. It's definitely a good card to have around, and it's cheap. That's another reason why I like it. It's just such a useful card, especially. get Basically, you're utilizing cards you don't, you don't want or that are useless to you, but to, to make your next turn even better, potentially. I love Grotto. Definitely the most my most favorite card in this expansion, Dominion Plunder. And that is all of the cards in Dominion Plunder. I went over every single one pretty much. So thank you guys for watching these two videos. Don't forget to leave me a like if you guys liked uh, my explanation of the cards from Dominion Plunder. And I'll see you guys again next time. Goodbye.